purify me. And say whatever you desire. Oh Lord, to clean my hands, purify me. I wanna. Good morning, Zion Church. Happy Sunday. Let's all stand to our feet. Who's excited to be in the parking lot of the Lord? Come on. Hey. Oh, oh man, what a beautiful day to be outside. Yes, sir. Yeah, I love when we do this. Let's just all, let's lift our hands right now. Come on, let's, this is just a sign symbolically, Father, we are lifting our expectations, God. Whatever we brought in, whatever we came with, we leave it on the parking lot ground and we lift our hands, we lift our eyes, God. We thank you that we can live freely and lightly, that your yoke is easy and your burden is light, God. Thank you, Lord, that there is no place for guilt. There is no place for shame. There is no place for condemnation. That the blood of Jesus speaks a better word over us this morning. We thank you, God. Oh, yeah. We thank you, Lord. Yeah, come on. Just give him thanks right now. Oh, we thank you. Oh, we thank you.
This will be our song this morning. This will be our song this morning. That our God reigns. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Every circumstance must bow. Every situation must bow. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. Man, I just feel the Lord, and I just feel like faith is right on the brink of rising up right now in some of us. You know, this morning, we're going to be going after some big things. We're going to be praying for the Lord to intervene, not just in our city and our nation, but around the world. When we raise our hands, it's like we're walking into battle from victory, not for victory. When we sing these songs, this isn't us like... This isn't like a struggle. This isn't like a battle, if you know what I mean. Like we have already won. No one heard me. We have already won. He has defeated the grave. The blood of Jesus has spoken 2,000 years ago, and he has spoken today, and he will speak tomorrow and forevermore. That his blood speaks a better word. Yeah, I was reading Psalm 20, like as we were preparing for this Sunday. And it's like King David saying, he says, some trust in chariots, some trust in horsemen, some trust in governments, some trust in finances, but I will put my hope and trust in the Lord. Yahweh, the King of kings, the Lord of lords. So just right there where you are, I just want us to lift our hands one more time. Come on. As a prophetic act, as a prophetic declaration, Come on, maybe you got some big stuff going in your life right now. Maybe you need healing. Maybe you need breakthrough. Maybe you need the Lord to like defend you. And if you got nothing to pray for, we are going to prophesy and we're going to sing this over Ukraine, over Russia, over the nations. Father, we lift our banner, God, and it's you. This isn't some cute political ploy, it's Jesus. It's Jesus, Yeshua, the King of kings, the Lord of lords is his name, Father, and that's the banner we raised this morning. So we're gonna sing till our voice gives out. We're gonna sing till we can't anymore. Gonna sing a little louder. We're gonna sing a little louder. We're gonna sing a little louder.
voices lifted up. Hurry. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. And this is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles. With praise, with praise. This is how I find my battles. This is how I find my battles with worship. Oh, this is how I find my battle. Yeah. This is how I find my battles. It may look like it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you.
praise in Jesus' name. Whoa, my victories in Jesus. Something is shifting right now. We're doing something right now. We're waging war in this spiritual atmosphere. It may not feel like it. Maybe it's your first time and we're like, dang, we're singing this a lot over and over. It's the same thing every time. But something is changing in the spiritual realm that we cannot explain. When we sing our weapon is a melody, like our weapon is worship, like we are putting that to practice right now. And we are enthroning the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. It says that he is enthroned on the praises of his people, on the praises, on our songs, on our worship. We are putting him back on the throne. Okay, here we go. Zion Church, what we are doing right now is we are, we are dethroning fear is what we're doing. We are dethroning hopelessness. We are dethroning death. We are dethroning sin and the sinful nature and we are putting the rightful king of glory back on his spot, on his rightful throne. When we praise, when we worship, enemies flee, like literally. I'm talking literally. What we're doing in this little sleepy town of San Clemente, I believe is shifting the atmosphere in Eastern Europe right now. So I want us, just for a second, I want us to get out of like our problems that we're going through. I got a cut on my finger, like forget it. Get out of what we're going through right now and I want us to be family right now. For our brothers and sisters in Ukraine, even in Russia, Father, it may look like that they're surrounded, God, but they're surrounded by you, Jesus. They're surrounded, but they're surrounded by you. Come on. It may look like they're surrounded, but they're surrounded by you. It may look like they're surrounded, but they're surrounded by heavenly hosts. It may look like they're surrounded, but they're surrounded. Oh, church, let's prophesy, we say. It may look like they're surrounded, but they're surrounded by you. Oh, it may look like they're sur they're surrounded by your goodness, by your faithfulness. It may look like they're surrounded. Hey, hey, hey. It may look like they're surrounded, but they're sur Let them lift their eyes. Oh, it may look like they're surrounded but they're surrounded by you oh it may look like they're surrounded but they're surrounded by you oh it may look like they're surrounded but they're surrounded by you oh it may look like they're surrounded oh it may look like lift it up we say it look like they're surrounded but they're surrounded You know, the family of God is really big. And a lot of times when things in our world happen that are really distant from our geographical location, it can cause a distance in our heart. And in a moment like this that our world is facing, it's, it's critical to allow what's happening globally to tenderize our heart as the family of God. And... It's far different when things happen from a distance that you feel don't directly affect you than when something happens in your family that does. And even more than a macro kingdom of God, we're all family brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. A part of our church family on our church staff, 
We have Slav. We have his father, Andre, joining us this morning. And uh, Slav and his whole family are from Ukraine and are experiencing this very firsthand. And we're family. And uh, we wanted to just take a moment today and we just wanted to say we love you guys we're for you and God says to mourn with those who mourn he says to weep with those who weep God is near to the brokenhearted and also God says to have faith he says to believe even if it seems impossible let's link arms as the global family of God the church of Jesus Christ and believe that God can do something that only God can do supernaturally. And so we invited Slav and, and Andre to actually intercede for uh, this entire conflict right now. And he's going to actually speak in his native tongue. He's going to declare and intercede in Ukrainian over everything that's happening right now. And we just want to invite you to join with us link arms in the spirit and i just want to invite you to pray in the spirit of god батько небесний ми зараз цей час перед тобою схиляємося діти твої воїни твої яких ти іскупив своєю кров'ю святою ми приходимо до тебе в ім'я ісуса твого спас нашого спасителя який давав нам всю зброю і ми зараз підносимо свій голос до тебе за твоїх любих іскуплених Дітей, які живуть в Україні, пошли твою защиту, твої ангелів, твій купол над Україною, над небом. Нехай сьогодні він буде. Нехай твої сили небесні, вони зупинять всякі взриви бомбів. Нехай твоя рука защита буде над цією землею. Благослови всіх нас, їх. Нехай твоє ім'я буде прославлене. Во ім'я Ісуса. Амінь. Lord, we pray for the children of Ukraine. We pray for Ukraine as a nation, that you would intervene on their behalf, Jesus. That even though Kiev and Chernyov are being surrounded, Lord, I just declare that you would push them back supernaturally. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would take this moment when people are scattered, that you would bring revival. Every time in history where the church has scattered, you have proven yourself. God, I pray on behalf of the people of Ukraine that you would show up supernaturally. Would you drive away the Russian forces? Would you confuse them? Would you push them back? Lord, I pray that there would be a supernatural empathy that, that goes on the Russian troops, that they would stop and drop their weapons. In Jesus' mighty name, Lord, I pray for revival both in Ukraine and in Russia, that the Russian people would rise up and pray and fast and go against the spirits and the demons. It's not against flesh and blood, but spirits and principalities. So we say, devil, we put your hands off of Ukraine. Get your hands off of Russia. And we declare Ukraine and Russia will be saved in the mighty name of Jesus.
This is how I fight in my battle. This is how I fight in my on our knees in worship. This is how I fight in my battle. This is how I fight in my battles. This is how I fight in my battles. Crown you with glory, King Jesus. There's nothing my God cannot do. He did it for me, He can do it for you. There's nothing my God cannot do. There's nothing my God cannot do. No, there's nothing my God cannot do. If He did it for me, He can do it for you. There's nothing my God cannot do. No, there's nothing my God cannot do. Oh, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing. No, there's nothing. No, there's nothing. Yeah. Oh, there's nothing. sing in my life. i 
Thank you that you're the perfect father, Lord. That the government is resting on your shoulders, Lord. You are seated on the throne, Father, and justice and righteousness flows from your throne, God. Justice and righteousness, God. So, Lord, would you rise, God, as the defender? Would you rise as the warrior, God? Would you rise as the prince of peace, God? Peace, peace, Lord. It's who you are. Not what we do, but who you are. We bless you, Ukraine. We bless you, we cover you. The presence of the living God. So Jesus, would you receive all honor, all glory, all praise, all power, all blessing, all dominion today and forevermore, God. Be enthroned on our praises. In Jesus' name, as Zion Church said, amen and amen. Come on, can we give him praise one more time? We worship you, Jesus. Yeah, come on, don't get tired. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Welcome to Zion Church, you guys. We are family. We love to worship. We love to stand with our brothers and sisters. Weep with those who weep. Laugh with those who laugh. Come on, let's turn to a couple people next to us. Give them a hug. Say it's good to see your beautiful face.
Hey Zion Church, welcome. If this is your first time, we are honored that you would join us this Sunday morning. And yes. uh, if you're joining us online, welcome. We're happy that you're tuning in. Um, if you are here for the first time, we want to make sure that you know that you are immediately family, that you don't have to be anyone special. You don't have to do all the right things. We're just happy that you're here with us today. Um, also, if you want to get connected to the life of the church, if this is your first time, or even if this is your church home, um, feel free to go to zionchurch.online. You can scroll all the way to the bottom of the page there where it says, Get Connected. Fill out your information, and then you will receive emails. You'll get updates as to what is going on in the life of the church. So make sure you go to zionchurch.online. You scroll to the bottom where it says, Get Connected, and fill that out for us. Awesome. So my name is Tiffany. I'm one of the Zyth leaders here Woo! at Zion. And we have a Zion night coming up next Monday, March 7th at 630. Don't pay attention to the date up there. That says March 8th. That's a Tuesday. But we have free Chick-fil-A and a giveaway. So come if you're on. a 6th through 12th grader, please come. Bring your friends. Bring your family. Bring your dog. Maybe not. But, you know. Yeah. Also, along that note, we have a lot of things coming up in the life of Zeith. We have our weekly Monday gatherings, which is tomorrow, and then we have that Zeith night coming up. And also, we want to put our faith into action. So we're taking students to Mexico. Um, we're going to be doing outreach. We're going to be working with, in orphanages. We're going to be praying for high school to high schoolers, middle school to middles. It's going to be a grand time for students to pray and to intercede and do some mission work. So if there are any interested parents in that information about the details, the safety, the cost, everything along those lines. We'll be having a meeting at Zion HQ this Thursday, the 3rd. So make sure you come through to that. It's going to start at 6.30 p.m. We can't wait. Yeah, I'm so excited to go down to Tijuana with our students. But anyways, we have child dedications coming up. And if you want to dedicate your child, I think that's happening next weekend, right? The 6th. The 6th. Just yep. kidding. It's not next weekend. But if you want to learn more, go to our webpage, zionchurch.online, Zion scroll down to upcoming events, and you can click learn more. And if you have any questions, you could also go to our connections table in the back. That's right. And now we're going to enter a time of giving. Man, just everything that's going on in the world today, um, it's really time for the church to step up and take part and be the church. And so... Um, we are um, going to enter in time of generosity, and if you haven't given yet, this is the perfect opportunity because you can see your money in action. We have Zai things coming up. We have mission trips coming up, and then we also will help uh, Ukraine. So um, you can give in three ways. One, you can text any amount to 84321. Or secondly, you can give directly at zionchurch.online and click the give button in the menu. Or thirdly, you can give directly to us at the Connection Tent. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you that you are king, like Joey mentioned. Lord, we thank you that you are seated on the throne and that you are the pastor of this church. Lord, we are submitted to you and what you envisioned for us this morning. Lord, I pray blessing over John, the word. And Lord, would you begin to open the hearts, the ears, and the minds of every person that's here today to receive what you have for us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Happy Sunday, everyone. How about this weather still, huh? Yeah. We loving it? Make some noise for Baptism Sunday, one of our favorite Sundays of the year. Later on today, we're going to see people uh, get fully immersed into this beautiful black pool over here. And uh, we're a little bougie this morning. Normally, it's about the 65-degree water of the Pacific Ocean. And man, there's been a heater that's just been, this is like a perfect jacuzzi situation. So if you're feeling like the Holy Spirit's tugging on your heart and you want to go all in for Jesus, we've got a Joko waiting for you over here. We love you. And uh, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe today is your day to get baptized in your jeans and, and, and whatever you're wearing. I was going to say blouses. That's weird. 
Blouses? Is that a word? I heard Slav say something today that was amazing. It's going to be a grand old time. <laughs> going to be a gee golly grand old youth event. That was amazing. By the way, Child Dedications is next Sunday. March 6th is next Sunday. Tiffany, I love you wherever you are. February is a confusing month with dates. So March always feels like so far out, but it actually is next Sunday. So if you're a family and you want to dedicate one of your kids, uh, sign up online this week, and we'd be uh, so honored to be a part of that experience with you. I want to greet our online family. Can we make some noise for every single person that's joining us online for, from wherever you're joining Hope that this experience encourages you, inspires you in your faith, uh, draws you closer to Jesus Christ. That's what we're all about as a church. And uh, we're so thankful. We're so thankful that you guys have chosen to spend your day with us. You guys ready for God's word? All right, let's turn to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. I'm going to give you guys a couple moments to get there. Luke chapter 6. We're journeying through the gospel of Luke And it's going to take us all the way to Easter. And the big idea behind that strategy is, well, first of all, we need to really, um, we need to really learn to love our Bibles. We, like, we need to learn what God says. And the point of the Bible is to point to the person of Jesus Christ. The Old Testament points forward to Jesus Christ The Gospels point to the life, the ministry, the work of Jesus Christ. And then everything after the first four books in the New Testament, the Gospels, the early accounts of Jesus, points back to Jesus Christ. To teach us to live like him, to love like him, and to look like him. And then Revelation talks quite a bit about present experiences 2,000 years ago and also future experiences. That Jesus Christ is coming back, amen? He is the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. And no matter what happens in our world, he is still on the throne. So it's really important that we don't just preach from my ideas or what's happening in culture or what's trendy. No, we preach from the word of God and we're going to focus on the story of Jesus Christ. And um, today I'm going to be reading a passage and, and, and doing my best to unwrap it that is one of those passages that you would typically want to skip over. Like if Jesus didn't say it, you would just kind of skim past it. You know, don't you just wish Jesus didn't say certain things? Like, let's just be really honest. It'd be a lot easier if Jesus didn't say stuff to like this, this, this dude that had a lot of possessions who was successful. He was a business dude. He accumulated a lot of wealth. And he's like, okay, th- like I've done everything to follow you, okay? And Jesus is like, yeah, but there's one more thing that I need you to do. Just sell all your possessions and give your money to the poor. Like wouldn't it be a lot easier if Jesus just kind of left that part out of the Gospels? Wouldn't it be a lot easier if, if Jesus didn't say, like, hey, I just want to let you know I, know, you're, I know you're trying hard, but if you just look at a woman with a little bit of lust in your eyes, you've already committed adultery with her in your heart? Ooh. Like, wouldn't it be a lot easier if he just didn't say that? Like, that kind of gets us. Hey, I mean, Jesus said some stuff that was kind of like, really, did you... Did you have to say that, or why, or uh, why was that included in the Gospels? You said something one time. (laughs) That was so crazy that a lot of people actually even left him for saying it. He, he, He had one of his most famous sermons of all time. This crowd is gathering, and yay, Jesus, it's an attractive movement. And then he turns around and he says, hey guys, I just want to let you know, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you can't be my follower. It's like, what? Like, where was Jesus's PR manager when he said some of these things? You know what I'm saying? Like, like if, if I was Jesus's PR manager, I'd be like, hey man, like pull it back. Like, like you got a good thing going. 
It seems like we're getting some traction here in Galilee and Judea and Samaria. People are kind of loving the fish and the loaves, miracles, the, like the signs and wonders. You talking about, you know, the beauty of little kids and their simple faith. I mean, that's, that's, that's a cool message. But dude, like, hey, maybe next time don't talk about people eating your flesh and drinking your blood. You know? Have we settled for a caricature of Jesus that we've created, or are we willing to embrace the real Jesus? As we travel through the Gospel of Luke, we're going to come face-to-face with some passages, like the passage today that we're going to be unwrapping, um, that, that, that if we're really honest, if anyone else said it other than Jesus, we would probably just skim past it and move on with our lives. But, 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 but Jesus, he doesn't play by our rules. And that's the beautiful thing about following him is, is the, the minute that you think you've got him totally figured out, he throws a wrinkle in the plan or he blows the box up or, you know, he, he does something to pull you in so that you can actually learn to trust him more even when you don't fully understand. Like Jesus doesn't play by my rules. So just, just like my, nine mo- uh, my nine-month-old son, by the way. Kellen doesn't play by my rules. Anyone else have like a, a baby or a kid that you're just like, like I don't want it to be the case, but you literally rule my life. Like I am directed by your, like, your behavior, like your sleep schedule, your actions. Like I play by your rules. Like, you're not playing my game. I've got to step into yours. And that's, that's the fun thing about Jesus, because what I find with Jesus and what we're going to talk about today is typically whatever my flesh wants to do, Jesus tells me to do the opposite. And that's the title of my message, if you're taking notes, and I encourage you to take notes It really helps stuff stick and help you learn how to apply it throughout the week. It's simply that phrase, do the opposite. Do the opposite. Most of the time in life, when I get into trouble, it's because there was a moment in time that I had an opportunity to make a decision, and if I were to just simply do the opposite of what I did, there would be health There would be life, there would be peace if I just simply did the opposite. Do the opposite. This this just might be the worst passage to read in 2022. Or maybe it's exactly what we need to hear. Luke, Luke 6, 27, Jesus says, if you're willing to listen, Zion Church, on this Sunday, if you're willing to listen. I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. If someone slaps you on one cheek, offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt Also, give to anyone who asks. And when things are taken away from you, don't try to get them back. Do to others as you would like them to do to you. Do the opposite. Now, for actually thousands of years, people have had issues interpreting this passage. And before we move on, before you come to conclusions, I'd like to uh, give you uh, my interpretation along with uh, many others that I think um, have, have a healthy interpretation of this passage. You have to see this passage in context. Jesus isn't necessarily talking about a political or military context. He was talking about interpersonal relationships. And, and, and oftentimes people will try to use this passage in arguments, uh, be it pacifism or just war, you know, meaning, in, in other words, like, never go to war. Never even defend yourself, right? Versus 
having a government, a system, a military that protects and defends the rights of its citizens and the freedoms and uh, uh, liberties of its citizens, just war, self-defense. People have misappropriated this text in many ways. People have misappropriated it also to kind of, it almost feels like Jesus is saying, like, just be a punching bag to anyone in your life. Let them hit you over and over and over again and keep the door open and just let them keep hitting you. It's not what Jesus is saying. Jesus, in fact, and all of Scripture talks about setting up healthy interpersonal boundaries. You can still love people unconditionally while keeping healthy boundaries. Jesus isn't talking uh, about you just being a doormat. Jesus isn't trying to say, throw away all interpersonal boundaries. And Jesus isn't saying to check your brain in at the door of the church if we had a door. But Jesus is saying something about what it means to be fully human. Jesus is giving us a picture of what it could look like if we chose to live different. I, um, I'm seeing a couple dogs this, this morning, and I love that there's dogs here. It reminds me of my dog. I had a dog once in my life. I begged my parents for a dog when I was like 13. I had seen the movie My Dog Skip, and I became obsessed with Jack Russell Terriers. I didn't research Jack Russell Terriers and their energy level. Uh, but I begged my parents for it to the point of exhaustion where one day I came home and guess what came running out? This, this little, cute, beautiful Jack Russell Terrier. And uh, I had such creativity that I named him Alex. <laughs> like what awkward, weird 13-year-old child names their dog Alex? This like sophisticated human name, Alex. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure Alex was demon-possessed. Like, <laughs> I, I, I don't know the full theology behind possession of animals, but my dog absolutely fit the bill. Like, he, he had schizophrenia of some sort. Like, he had a, like that like crazy in his eyes, you know what I mean? Where it's like, dude, I, I love you, man, and you hate me. Why? And we had such a complicated relationship. Uh, I taught him how to do like figure eights around my legs. I watched all these training videos. I'm like, if I'm gonna get a dog, I'm gonna like go all in. I, I, so he's did, I taught him how to do figure eights around my legs. I, I put like a hula hoop up. I trained him how to jump through the hoop, like all that. Um, but, but one thing that was interesting was this invisible fence that we installed in our backyard. We, do, we do, uh, weren't allowed to have fences in my neighborhood gr growing up in Michigan, and, uh, and so the only barrier or boundary that we could have for um, our backyards, especially for animals, to keep them in were these invisible fences. They were electric fences that you would install a couple feet under your lawn, and it would create a barrier, and then you would put a shock collar on your dog. Is this still legal? I'm not really sure. This was like way back. You'd put a little shot collar on your dog and then you could turn it up zero to 10. Like, like depending on how far away, you know, it wasn't brutal. Now there is a new movie that came out that you should not go see where people do brutal things to themselves. Back in high school, we strapped one of those. We wanted to make our own version of that movie that's out right now that shall not be named, uh, where people do crazy things and film themselves doing crazy things. We filmed my best, one of my best friends, Jason Habel, that I convinced to do everything. We put the shot collar on him and turned it up to 10. And he took it off at one point and there were two metal, uh, there were two red prong um, marks on his throat. But anyway, um, you would train your dog, you would take your dog that had the collar up, up to the invisible fence, and as soon as they would hit the boundary, it would give them a little shock, and they would go, yep. And that's how you trained them. So you would take them to different areas. You guys are totally judging me. I'm from Michigan. Don't just like, whatever. You know, this is what you did. And so we would do that over and over again. And I eventually trained him to understand what the invisible fence was, the invisible boundary. Everything is safe inside of 
this boundary, but the moment that you try to cross it, that you try to go beyond it, it's going to cause you pain. You're not going to enjoy it. And so for his entire existence, he lived within the boundaries of this fence. And I could see in his eyes that he, he saw the, you know, he saw the neighbors playing. He saw the yards that were past our yards. He saw the freedom and the life that could be found beyond it, but, but it was too much of a risk. It was too painful. It was too uncomfortable to think about. So he stayed within the confines of that invisible fence. One day though, I came home from school and I walk out to my backyard and I look out the door and I'm like, what is he doing? And uh, there, th there's Alex crouched in the corner in my backyard. And as soon as I opened the door to go play with him, he bolts from one side of the backyard all the way to the corner of the other side of the backyard. And I'm like, no, he's going to hit it. And he ran as fast as he could. And sure enough, he hit it. As soon as he hit it, he went, yep, and then just kept running. <laughs> ah, freedom. I couldn't find him for like an entire day. Finally, I find him and he had successfully rolled his entire body in another dog's little gift that they had left on their own lawn, like just to spite me for keeping him within the confines of that fence. And when I think about the invisible boundary that my dog lived in his entire life and the fear that he had of moving beyond that boundary into a life of true freedom, fulfillment, fun, that went beyond the safety of our yard. I can't help but think about the lid that we place on our love, the limits that we place on the grace that we give other people. I can't help in my own life think about the boundaries that I've set up when it comes to truly blessing other people, especially those that I don't agree with or that have criticized me or hurt me in some way. Jesus this morning wants to talk to us about three critical things that I, I believe are holding us back from the life that he offers. Anger, unforgiveness, and bitterness. We all experience conflict, pain, and hurt in life. And what I have found is that there's a trajectory that happens. You experience pain. You experience hurt. We all have been hurt and we've all hurt others. You experience misunderstandings or criticism, betrayal, and unresolved anger leads to an unwillingness to forgive, which results in an inability to live free. I want to say that again. It's so important. Write that down. Unresolved anger in your heart leads to an unwillingness to forgive. And an unwillingness to forgive others results in an inability to live free. That's why another scripture in God's word says, beware of a root of bitterness to take hold in your heart. Because once bitterness takes roots in your heart, it takes you captive. And you hold on to things that Jesus already died for and paid for. And you cannot live free until you release those things into the arms of God, the justice of God. And you release that person and what they've done to you into the loving hands and grace of Jesus Christ. Jesus is simply offering us a new way to be human. When we think about what's happening in Ukraine right now. When we zoom out and we have a macro perspective, it's, it's so interesting to me because for all of the advancement in technology, science, 
medicine, academics, the information age, the internet, social media. You know, you would think for all the advancement in our world, humans would have evolved by now beyond what we're seeing. If that's your perspective, you, you would have thought that something like this would never happen in 2022, which tells me that there is still something so broken, not just in the world, but in our human soul, that there is something that since our forefathers, Adam and Eve, Sin has been broken in need of restoration, and it, 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 it doesn't happen through medicine or technology or science or information. It can only happen through a restored, transformed heart, through the power of Jesus Christ. Imagine a world for a moment that actually lived like this lived like Jesus for 2,000 years in a row, what would the world look like today? What if instead of killing people for land, people actually loved one another and sought to understand? What if love was our motivation instead of power? What if selflessness was our first reaction and not self-preservation? What if the intrinsic value, dignity, and honor of each human was more important than money? I, I mean, I know I dream. I know I sound idealistic. John, you don't, I mean, dude, yeah, yeah, I get it, man. But here's the thing. That's what Jesus dreamed. Jesus wouldn't say stuff that was just wishful thinking or fantasy. Jesus dreamed that you and I would become fully alive, that we would become new humans with new hearts, with new motivations, and with new actions, and with new radical, stunning generosity, grace, mercy, and love for people that even hate us. I know it's a hard thing to come to grips with, but you were not made to be normal. You were made to be new. I, and I just believe we need to dare to dream together. You know, a lot of times, um, you, you know, we expect the world to act like Christians. And we're shocked when they don't. Right? And then we as a church who bears our Savior's name, we're fighting with each other. There's disunity. There's discord. There's competition. There's criticism. All we can do is look at each other and try to pick one another apart while the world is falling apart. And we have all these answers for Ukraine and Russia, and we don't, won't even talk to our neighbor next door to us that accidentally left their trash can on our side of the curb. <laughs> like, let, let's just be real for a moment. I mean, maybe that's just me. Yesterday, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go ahead and move this over to prove the point. Love you with the love of the Lord. <laughs> Just go ahead and move it over to your area. Okay, love you. <laughs> Be blessed. And God dealt with me, and we had a great conversation. It was good. But what, what, what would this kind of love look like in 2022? Jesus said, if you're willing to listen, which some of you have already shut me off too hard, too crazy. I can't love like that. What if you could? What if the spirit of Jesus actually lived in you? What if, what if if we wanted to see different, we actually had to live different and love different and talk different on social media and have different kinds of conversations with our family members that may or may not agree with our perspectives? Jesus said, if, if, if you're willing to listen, here's the first thing I say to you, love your enemies. I love that softball. Let me just make it, like, let, like, let me just put the bar really low. <laughs> if you want to learn to be different, love your enemies. <laughs> it's, it's kind of a high bar. <laughs> You might even be thinking, John, enemy, I don't have any enemies. I'm chill with everybody. Let's think about it. Let's test that. 
you, you, you probably, like me, find yourself quietly judging people based on the kind of car that they drive. And I'm going to get more about minivans in a moment. But you, 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 might, even, you might even have a, um, an issue that you don't talk to other people about when it comes to someone else's race and a stereotype and something that's deep inside your heart that, that you just can't get past. And, 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 you know, it's not that you don't love them. It's just you, you'd rather not be around them. You might have a situation where every time you see someone and what they say and what they project on social media, it gives you the uh, in your stomach. And um, it's not love. I don't have any enemies. Really? And that's just... That's just people that we have stuff against. Also, I mean, it, 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 it could look like something that you've been holding in your heart for a parent for a really long time. And maybe you've never confronted them about it, but you've talked to your brothers, your sisters about it, other people. And it's not just your enemy. You find safety in having a unified enemy. You know, maybe it's not even your enemy. Maybe it's just the fact that you're someone else's enemy. Because other people don't agree with your perspective. They don't share your core values. They don't like the way that you talk or act. The fact of the matter is we cannot escape the reality is we all have enemies. And whether they are your enemy or you are their enemy, we have to ask ourselves, what is our first reaction? Is it to keep them as enemies? Is it to punish them? Is it to distance ourselves from them? Is it to destroy them? Because by the way, that feels so much better in the moment, doesn't it? No one's, no one's going to be real this, this morning with me. It feels, okay, let me... Let, it feels so much better when someone criticizes you on social media to just clap back with whatever you feel like saying, right? In the moment. I'm not saying long term, I'm just saying in the moment. Okay, no one's gonna be real with me. Hus husbands and wives, husbands and wives. Let's talk about the plus one, the plus one rule, right? Some, uh, you know, someone tells you to do something and you go, okay, yeah, but you haven't done this and this. You, I mean, come on, let's, ju let's just be honest, right? Like. Like, babe, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be really nice if you picked the kids up from school. Well, hey, I know, I get it, but babe, it'd be really nice if you did the dishes and the laundry. You know what I mean? That feels good. That doesn't really work later. But it feels good to just get your, get your revenge out there. It feels good to, to repay them. It feels good to clap back. It feels good to feel like you're right. No, no, no. I know you have this perspective on the mandates and the masks and all that, but let me tell you, the science does not say so. Let me tell you why. I'm going to give you a PowerPoint. I'm going to bring you over. I'm going to sell you on my speech. I'm going to give you everything. And, 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 and I just want you to know, by the way, that I'm smarter than you, that I'm righter than you. And by the way, you're dumb. Did John just go there this morning? Wow. You see, some of you are laughing. Some of you are quiet. There's no guilt. There's no, ju there, like, there's no judgment. Have your stance. Stand firm. Be confident. But love must be our primary ambition in life. Man. Our world needs more Christians that actually know how to love. Seek to understand before we seek to be right. Seek to give grace. Seek to listen before we try to prove ourselves and our point. Jesus says, do the opposite. And the cool thing, here's the cool thing. This is going to sound wild, but the cool thing is that you can destroy your enemies by making them your friends. Jesus gives us a pathway to destroy enemies in our lives by actually making pathways for friendship. 
And the reason why that's kind of a hard thing to think about is because you can only imagine a world where there is an us versus them sort of mentality. But the beautiful thing is that Jesus imagines a world, in fact, he's making a world where we're so filled with his love, his grace, his spirit, and his truth, where we continue to seek restoration, not reparation. See, revenge seeks reparations. Grace always seeks restoration. I'm not fighting against the world so that I can feel good about my position. I'm fighting for the world because Jesus Christ died not just for Christians, but for the whole world. Three amens. It's a hard talk. Love your enemies. And here's what it looks like. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who hurt you. But the reality is, is, is we all have, um, just like if you go to Starbucks afterwards and they give you a lid with a little uh, drink stopper in it, you know, they give you a lid to your hot coffee and a drink stopper so that your coffee doesn't spill out and ruin your car. Ruin the leather, ruin the upholstery, it keeps your car safe, right? We all tend to have lids to our love. We understand this, we've heard this, love God and love people. But how far? What's the lid? Who's that person in your mind? You go, okay, stops there. Just like speed limits, we all have forgiveness limits. Just like the fence in our backyard, we all have blessing boundaries. Just like the roof over our head, we have prayer ceilings, where we pray about certain people, but we would never pray for the salvation, the healing, and the restoration of that person or that nation. Here's where Jesus really gets in your business. If you, if you, if you think it's, it's been interesting so far, here, here we go. Um, he's not calling me just to love my enemy in my heart. He's calling me to actually do something. He says, there's another way to experience the freedom that you long for, and it starts with praying for those who hurt you. Wow, that's hard. It's so hard. I mean, it's hard on the road. Let's be honest. To actually think a good thought about someone who cuts you off. You know, man, I I am that driver. If you cut me off on the road, I don't care if you're from Zion Church or not. I am in the back seat of your car with you. You know, I am right up there. You know, you you can see my, you know, the blacks in my eyes. You know, I'm, it's like, you can take the boy out of Detroit, but you can't take the Detroit out of the boy. Like, I'm, whoo, don't cut me off, you know. I told you minivans, I would get after you. And by the way, you like this, this minivan militia out there, you gotta be careful of those minivans. They're, they're the worst. My word. It's crazy. I mean, it, yeah, by the way, if you own a minivan and you're here, like we're gonna do an altar call afterwards, baptism tanks, nice and hot and ready for you, salvation for you. No, we love you. Did someone say YOLO? <laughs> YOLO, buy a minivan. But like, <laughs> it's like so hard when someone cuts you off. You know, it's like I, 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 I want to do the like, okay, I'm, I'm going to come up behind you and then I'm going to get beside you. Then I'm going to stare at you and watch you text until you look at me in the eyes. And then I'm going to go this. Sometimes it's a hand thing. What are you doing? What are you doing? You know? And then I'm going to speed past you to prove to you that I won. (laughs) I'm the only sinner here, though, right? (laughs) The Bible says pray for them. Pray for those that hurt you. But it it doesn't say what to pray for them. (laughs) 
You know, it, it, sometimes when, when we read passages like this, it's like, okay, you know, pray, pray for your enemy, love your enemy, pray for those that, that hurt you. I, I, I can't feel like, I, I can't help but feel like it's just like some like cheesy fake Christianity, you know, where I can't be real with my emotions, where it's just kind of like love them with the love of the Lord. It's like, no, 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 no. Like how about some real stuff in your life? Like, John, you don't know what they said to me. You don't know the trauma that I've experienced. You don't know what I've gone through. You don't know the hurt that they have caused. You don't know what they've said. You don't know what they've done. And the reality is, is that I don't. But I do know the consequences of unforgiveness. I do know what it feels like to hold things against people and not live free. I also know of a savior who was spotless, pure, perfect, and he was unjustly crucified. And as he hangs on a cross, bleeding and suffocating to death, he looks into the eyes of those that had beat him and mocked him and spit in his face and nailed him to a cross. And he says, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. My feelings are not my model. Jesus is my model. I cannot be a slave to my feelings or even my hurt. I cannot be a victim. I cannot live in a prison that I have self-constructed when Jesus is my model. And he says, as hard as it is, no matter how it, you know, much it hurts, how much pain they've caused you, forgive, forgive, and forgive. Not because they deserve it, but you deserve to live free. Jesus did the opposite on the cross. Most people, you just need to know, will never understand how much they've hurt you. And my job isn't to get them to understand. My job is to release them into God's hands so that I can have freedom. And hear me, by doing this, you will experience a supernatural peace that surpasses all misunderstandings. A supernatural peace in your heart that gives you an experience of freedom. When you release control of it, it no longer controls you. My question for you this morning is what is it? Is it a person? Is it a moment? Is it an action? Is it a trauma? Is it a word? Is it a word or words spoken over to your life? Is it someone who cuts you? Is it a wound that hasn't healed? Forgiveness frees you. There's that TV show Hoarders. I know it's kind of old now, but it pictures people that that have you know mental, emotional disorders that. Um, really caused them to accumulate and to hoard and then to live in this, this, this um, hoarding environment. And as you see in the show, if you continue to hoard and hoard and hoard things that you think are valuable to you, think, things that are comfortable to you, things that you think you need to hold on to, what it ends up doing is it creates a toxic environment in the air and in the living situation where, where it actually damages you to the point where people can even die from hoarding. Yeah. And if you continue to hold on to things in your life and you continue to hold on to bitterness and anger against people, if you continue to hold on to that thing and do not give it to the Lord and seek healing and restoration, then it's going to create a toxic environment in your soul where nothing can live. And I just even want to offer you a next step. This is very practical. At Zion Church, we believe in deep inner healing prayer. And on our website, if you're someone, you'd say, man, I 
I feel that and I'd like to take a next step because I want to live free and I want to break free from anger, from unforgiveness, from bitterness. We have trained up inner healing, like deep dive prayer leaders that uh, will go through a two hour session with you to really help bring the Holy Spirit into the wounds and the trauma and the hurt in your own heart so that you can see very real redemption, restoration, and transformation in your life and in your relationships. So go on to zionchurch.online, click next steps, and click prayer support, and we would be happy to support you in that. I'm telling you, forgiveness frees you. Jesus is like, whatever your flesh wants you to do, do the opposite. Then he gets a little bit more descriptive. In Luke 6, 29, he's like, if someone slaps you on the cheek, which would have been an insult back in that day, do what? Offer the other cheek also. If someone demands your coat, offer your shirt also. It's kind of a, an awkward analogy that Jesus uses, right? If someone slaps you on the cheek, and I just want to pause for a funny story story for a moment. When Taryn was um, at a different church growing up, she was at church one day. I, I absolutely did not get permission to share the story, which makes it better. Um, I'm sure I'm going to hear about it later, but she was young and she was, uh, she was uh, walking through the church hallways afterwards and she saw her mom talking to a friend in the distance and she thought it'd be really funny if she came up uh, behind her mom out of nowhere and slapped her cheek. And so, she's, so she, she comes up to her mom afterwards, and, he's, and she, she slaps her cheek, and it was like, you know, like, per, you know, perfect contact, you know? And, and, and her mom screams and turns around, and it wasn't her mom. <laughs> Got to be careful whose cheeks you slap, especially at church. <laughs> Kim. I'm going to pay for that one later, right? Yeah. <laughs> Getting slapped on any cheek is awkward. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> you know what's even more awkward? Offering your other cheek. <laughs> Jesus is doing something here. He's saying if someone insults you, if someone criticizes you, if someone judges you, if someone condemns you, if someone makes fun of you, do the most awkward thing that you can do, which is to offer your other cheek. The most powerful weapon that you can use when you're hurt is to get back up and say, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Because I am unoffendable. Jesus paid for all of my shame, my guilt, and my offense. So no matter what you say, no matter what you do, I am confident in my identity as a son and daughter of Jesus Christ. So go ahead. Have your way. Go ahead. Go for it. Say what you will. It's not going to change me. I know who I am. I know whose I am. I love you, by the way. Go ahead. It's, it's, it's awkward for people that want to fight you and you don't want to fight. People that want to argue with you and you go, you know what? Like everyone has a different perspective. This is mine. Uh, so in all humility, this is where I stand and I just would rather not talk about it anymore. No, 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 no. I want to argue. I want to fight. Jesus invites you to make it awkward. Because here's the thing, we have a church culture at times that just simply keeps acting like the world and we keep fighting back, we keep clapping back, we keep pointing at other churches and criticizing pastors and leaders and we keep causing discord and disunity and fighting amongst ourselves and we got a world that goes, why would I want to be a part of that? If we truly want to see different, we got to be different and the only way to be different is to create a disorientation to make it awkward for the world. What do you mean you keep loving me? I hate you. Why, why, why do you hate me? Because you're a Christian. That's all right. I still love you. 
That's all right. I'm still for you. That's, that's totally okay because Jesus died for you. And he loves you. And I'm not going to stop giving you mercy and grace. Jesus said, bless those who curse you. Bless those who, who curse you. Back to minivans, all right? I know I'm, I'm going, we were going to Elijah's 13th birthday party, and we got out of the car, we got our little nine-month-old and his little stroller, and uh, we go to Itchy Berry for like the, you know, da-da-da-da experience, you know, it's cool. And we park in the parking lot, and we get out of the car, and we walk out into, you know, just the normal lane, as a normal family does, and a minivan comes flying around the corner, like, like flying around the corner, it had like one of those cargo tops on top of it. And I want, uh, I'm just telling you, man. And, and, and as he flew around the corner, maybe it was one of you. I love you. Come to the altar and we'll have some laying on a hands ministry. Um, I, I, he threw his arms up and stared at us as if it was our fault that we existed. You know what I mean? Like, what are you doing walking with your nine-month-old baby? I'm a minivan, and I want to fly around the corner. And I can't, man, I wanted to just, like, oh, man, I wanted to run after that van and, like, rip the cargo thing off the top. Like, like when it comes, you know, like, Mama Bear, like, comes out of, Mom, you know, Papa Dad or whatever. I don't know what that is. Papa Dad, that was weird. You know what I mean, though? Dad strength. I'm like, Dang. Like, I, 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 I find myself, those that, man, I, I really want to get even. I have a tough time blessing those that offend me or don't agree with me or don't respond the way that I want to respond. I have a neighbor. Um, and, um, you know, it's an interesting situation. Like, I have really struggled with this neighbor and... Um, you know, we got a call. Um, I got a call from my wife that basically said, if you, you know, if, if you see this neighbor, um, make sure that this neighbor stays away from me and my kid. I was working out at the gym at 24 Hour Fitness because I've been getting in the gym since the start of 2022. I get this text from my wife and I immediately get in my car and I fly home because I'm triggered. You know what I mean? Like I get that car, like I get in that car, I fly home and <laughs> I got out of my, <laughs> I'm 165 pounds, but I think I'm, I think I'm Trizzle man on the outside. You know, I think I look like Trent, 165 pounds, but I was working out. I had my pre-workout in my veins and I was like, I get out of the car and I do a 360 look and, you know, all around the neighborhood. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? Come at me. Like, man, it can't, it's like scary. Like I was literally, I thought something had happened and I was, I was ready to throw down. And like it flashed through my head in that moment. First of all, flashed through my head in that moment. Like, what are you doing? Like your whole church is going to see it in the news. Zion church pastor, you know, gets taken away in handcuffs. Nine month old son takes over as lead pastor, you know, like, <laughs> Like, what do you do? Like, I wanted to punch my neighbor in the throat because I thought he was attacking my wife or my kids, right? And I get back in, and I'm like, what happened? And Taryn's like, oh, nothing. I just, I don't know. I just thought, I don't know, someone's back, back around. I thought you just might want to be aware, you know? <laughs> I was like, you don't understand. Like, I was ready to go to prison for you, babe. Like, my first reaction was anger, revenge, um, hatred. It's a neighbor that I've struggled with ever since I moved in. And God asked me a question. He said, would you pause for one moment, John, and see him for how I see him? Would you see his dignity and his value? 
Would you see his story? Would you seek to understand the trauma that he's experienced, the brokenness and the pain that he's gone through, the misunderstandings that he's lived with? Would you take a moment and see him the way that I see him? This is what it means to bless those that curse you, to speak what God sees. It's a hard thing to do. But it's what Jesus calls us to do. In our marriage and in our family, we wrote down some cultural values and we're, 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 we're anchoring ourselves to the, the person of Jesus. And we said, we want to be the kind of family that carries a spirit of honor where we speak out in one another's lives what God sees even before we might see it as a reality. That we speak out the gold that God put in them. We speak out the value that God has placed in them. We speak out the goodness that God made them for because your attitude always creates atmospheres. Speak what God sees. Honor them for how God sees them, even if you can't see anything honorable about them. I just believe that prayer and blessing is our greatest battle. It's our greatest weapon in the battle of anger and unforgiveness and bitterness that the enemy really wants to root into our souls. Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. once famously said that darkness cannot overpower darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot overpower hate. Only love can do that. I want to be the kind of person that says, you can keep cursing me. You can keep mocking me. You can even keep hating me and hurting me, but I am going to continue to bless you. Even if I don't feel it, I'm going to force it. And I'm just telling you, I know that sounds weird, but sometimes you have to force it because you're never or you're rarely going to feel like blessing that person. There are people in our lives where we would rather not bless right now because we would like to get a certain outcome for our family and our story, but we have chosen to go, no, we bless you as a, as a man. We bless you as a woman. We bless you as a dad. We bless you as a mom. We speak God's healing power over your life. We speak his grace and his mercy over your family story. We speak God's future over your life. Your life's going to look better in the future than it did in the past. What would it look like if we spoke blessing over people that we didn't want to say anything to? Prayer and blessing in this passage are words that are spoken, not thoughts that are thought. You can think that you love people. You can feel that you love people. But God says, you got to speak and you got to do. That's the only way that the world will know that we truly love them. And he finishes by saying, do good to those who hate you. In the Greek, do means to bring, to bring good news to them, to bring grace to them. Followers of Jesus Christ simply don't put up with their enemies. They lay their lives down for them. And something that really has got my soul is this cultural idea of tolerance. I actually think that tolerance is worse than hate. Because when you hate someone, at least you're passionate about it. Tolerance is indifference, which leads to a cold, calloused heart that stays distant from other people. You just do you, I'll do me. Jesus says, no, it doesn't work like that. I didn't call you just to put up with people in the world. I called you to bring good news. 
to people that look like you, to people that don't look like you, to people that love you, to people that mock you, to, to a world that's disinterested. You are called to bring good news. And we take the first step. You know, I've just found love always takes the first step. Well, I'm just waiting for them to text. No, you text. I'm waiting for them to say sorry. No, you reach out. I'm just waiting till God gives me the green light. He already gave it. You go first. You reach out. You seek restoration. It doesn't mean that you don't have healthy boundaries. It doesn't mean that you don't have parameters on how you converse and how much you converse and what your relationship looks like. I'm not saying that. What I am saying is that we rarely take the first step because we keep people distant and tolerance leads to apathetic and different love that never makes any difference. To sum it all up, do the opposite. Jesus says, do to others as you would like them to do to you. Do the opposite. When you want to gossip, exercise self-control. When you want to bite back, slow down and seek understanding. When you want to withhold from others, give your best stuff to them. When you want to create distance, lean in. When you want to take it into your own hands, pray and give it to God. When you have nothing good to say, say something good. Do the opposite. It doesn't make sense. Why would we do that? It only makes sense because God did the opposite. A perfect, holy, righteous God descended in the form of Jesus Christ, became fully man, fully God, became fully man, lived a perfect, sinless life. And it says in John 3, 17, that God didn't send his son in the world to judge the world, but to save the world through him. God didn't wait for us to come to him first before dying for us on a cross. God didn't wait until we had it all figured out in our act together before sacrificing his life for us. While we were still sinners, scripture says that Jesus Christ died for you and me. Did you deserve that? Do I deserve that? God did the opposite of what he had to do the opposite of what we normally do. He, full of love, stepped down into our story and went first. And he did it because he loves you and I so much. Some would say that this love is reckless. Some would say that this love is crazy. Some would say that this love doesn't make sense. God breaks all the boundaries. God demolishes all the walls, all of the barriers of what makes sense so that he could have a relationship with you. Would you pray with me? I feel like there's two groups of people in here this morning. I feel like there's one group where you'd say, man, this is a, a challenging message. I'm a believer. But maybe there's been some names, some faces, some moments that you need to surrender to God so that you can live free. And then there's a second group of people that are here where you'd say, I'm not in right relationship with Jesus Christ. And I have pain and I have anger and I have bitterness and I, I don't understand why 
stuff happened to me in life. And man, I just, I'm living in cycles of pain and guilt and shame. And, and I would love to break free, but I don't know what my next step is. Your next step is being in right relationship with Jesus Christ. You'll never be able to pass on what you do not possess. So if you want to live this way, if you want to love this way, if you want your life to look like Jesus Christ, you must receive his scandalous grace, mercy, and forgiveness for you. No matter how you feel, Jesus died for all of it. He paid for all of it. He brought healing and restoration so that you could experience the freedom the life that you were created for. And I want to give you that invitation before you leave today. If you're not in right relationship with Jesus, if you would say, John, if I left today, I couldn't confidently say that I'm following Jesus Christ, that I've given my entire life to him. I want to offer you that lifeline. I'm going to count to three. And when I say three, I want you to shoot up your hand as a symbol to God that you want in and he'll meet you with his loving Holy Spirit right there one I want you to know that Jesus Christ loved you first he loved you first and two I want you to know that all you have to simply do is respond to him and his free gift of grace and in faith you are will be saved and free. So I'm going to count one, two, and three. If that's you, would you just shoot up your hand and say, I want to go all in for Jesus Christ. I want to start a relationship with him right there in the back. Thank you. All the way in the back. Thank you. I see that hand right there. I see that hand. Thank you. I want to go all in for Jesus Christ. Thank you. I see that hand. Thank you. I see that hand. I want my sins forgiven. I want a new life in Jesus Christ. And I want to live full of freedom and victory. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for the hands that are raised. We celebrate right now, just as you're throwing a party in heaven, that there are new children of God that have entered into your family, never to be taken out. God, would you fill them with courage and faith in this moment? And in this week, would you surround them with friends that would push them closer and closer into your loving arms of grace and support? I pray that you would right now just demolish any distraction or attack on their mind, on their emotions, in Jesus' name, and that they would know that their identity is now as a son and a daughter of King Jesus. They are saved. They are a new creation. They are your kids. And so we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. And then... With all heads bowed and eyes closed, we're going to worship Jesus Christ. But I want to just allow you, if you're someone and you feel like, man, you're holding on to some bitterness, you're holding on to some anger, or there's, there's um, unforgiveness in your heart, and you want to surrender that to Jesus Christ, just put your hands out in front of you, palms up to the sky. And just simply say, Lord, I surrender it to you. Whatever it is, I surrender it to you. I release control of it because it no longer controls me. I thank you that you have washed me clean. I give it to you right here in the parking lot, never to pick it back up. Release me from anger. Release me from rage. Release me from impatience behavior. Release me from unforgiveness in my heart. I've been withholding stuff from people that you've called me to love, and it's done nothing but create toxicity in my heart. Release me, Lord, so that I can live full of freedom. In Jesus' name we pray this. Amen. Amen. Would you all stand? Joey's going to lead us as we respond in worship.
Lord, I confess that I've been a criminal, stolen your breath, and sang my own song. Lord, I confess that I'm far from innocent. These shackles I wear Oh, I've brought on my own Scarlet saints had a crimson cost You nailed my dead to that old rugged cross an empty sleigh at the empty grave Thank God that stone was rolled away Lord, I confess That I've been the prodigal Made for your house But walked my own Jesus came He tore down my prison walls Decades to life When He called me by name Scarlet saints had a crimson cost You nailed my dead to that shout of praise for those that raised their hands and went all in for Jesus Christ. We're going 
We're going to celebrate that fact by water baptisms right now. So if you're being water baptized today, if you can make your way on over to the pool over here, and um, absolutely zero pressure to stay, but it's always a party. It's a family celebration here at Zion. Baptisms are a community event. And so if you can stay, please stay. And, and in fact, you can even make your way right now around the tank so you can get a good view of those getting baptized. But man, we're gonna just enjoy what God is doing in new lives that are changed by Jesus Christ, by seeing people baptized. If you made a decision to follow Jesus Christ, even today, uh, we, we have a warm baptism tank and we have towels. So in the New Testament, oftentimes it said people were saved and that very day they were baptized. And uh, we love to also follow the New Testament model and allow for spontaneous spirit-led baptisms. And so if you want to be baptized and you're in your jeans and t-shirt or shorts, no worries. We'd love to baptize you as well, but we're going to begin that. So make your way on over. Everyone give it up for Brittany. Brittany, can you just say real quick, I know I didn't prep you for it, but what does this moment mean to you? I've been waiting for this since September 2020. <laughs> I don't know if I can talk right now. It's okay. <laughs> it means a lot to me. Yeah. Yeah. Is Jesus Lord of your life? Well, hey, it's our honor, it's our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit because of your profession of faith that Jesus is both your Savior and your Lord. It's our joy to baptize you today as a church family. Victoria and I was baptized as a baby and I grew up in the church and I became the prodigal daughter. I became everything that I judged and I went to Point Loma Nazarene University, got out of school, um, suffered a lot and it was such a gift and this is the first time that I've actually gotten to choose Christ as an adult and I am grateful for the pain that I went through that strengthened my relationship with God and I'm here to to share with you that as a, you can be a single mama and you can yeah. you can suffer and your strength God can turn your wounds and your scars into strength yeah. and you can be closer to God than ever before. <laughs> it's our honor to baptize you today. Come on, what a powerful story. Yeah. 
This is Gio, and uh, he's in his clothes. Do you know what that means? Today, baby. Come on in. Gio, what does this moment mean to you, brother? <sighs> to want to live again. Yeah. To want to be a positive, positive impact. Not just in my community, but with my life. When you don't want to keep going and you find a new reason, it comes from the, not the inside of me, but from the inside of everything. I just, yeah. Oh. Geo. Do you today publicly profess that Jesus Christ is Savior of your sins and Lord of your life? Makes my heart beat again. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Well, it's our honor to baptize you, brother. have happened recently in my life that have just kind of pointed me towards this and uh, I just I want more than anything right now to further my relationship with Jesus and just give some love back that I know I've been receiving yeah yeah I love it Tyler this is your moment brother your public declaration of faith in response to this inward thing that God's doing inside of you to publicly declare that he's both the savior of your sins and the leader and Lord of your life. It's our privilege to baptize you, brother.
All right, everyone, this is Kristen. Say hi. Kristen, talk to us. What does this moment mean for you? Well, I've been working my way back to the Lord for the past year, and um, I read the entire Bible, and uh, I've spent hours upon hours listening to Derek Prince videos because I couldn't find a church that I felt comfortable in. So I realized that um, I am now a believer, yeah. and I truly believe that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. Yes. So I knew that it was time for me to be baptized. It yes. was the one thing that I needed to do. So I went online, and I found your church, which is kind of funny because I had never found it before when I was looking for a church. So it was meant to be now that I was baptized. Yes. And um, yes. I have to say, though, I need to say that when I was a child, I went to church as a little girl for a very short period of time, and I got a Bible, and I did believe in the Lord. But yeah. then we moved, I went astray, yeah. and I spent 50 years um, pretty much lost trying to find the truth, yeah. only to come full circle yeah. and Thank find God. that I knew the truth <laughs> when I was 10 years old. Yeah. I so. Love it. Praise the Lord. <laughs> what, a, what, a beautiful, what a beautiful story of redemption. What a beautiful story. And uh, Jesus has been pursuing you all along, Kristen. And we're honored to have you in the family. It's our honor to baptize you today. We love you. Ocean, we're all sinking. He loves us Introduce yourself, and what does this moment mean to you? Hi, I'm Lynn. Um, this is a reconnection with God. Um, I'm just so full of joy, and I'm ready to dedicate my life. Let's go. So today, Lynn, are you professing that Jesus Christ is both your Lord, your Savior, and you're going all in for him? Yes. All right. It's our honor. It's our honor to have you, your beautiful family in. They just completed growth track, and fully in at the church, but more importantly, with Jesus Christ.
Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Alfredo, and uh, I'm here to, you know, because I want newness. Um, I want new beginning, and uh, there's so much work to be done. And uh, I want to be a vessel for the Lord, and I want to be cleansed today. And whatever, whatever has been holding me back is going to get drowned yeah. today, Amen. and nothing will hold me back. Amen. Alfredo, you and your beautiful family, we're honored to have you in the community. This is a public declaration of faith that you're all in your past. It ain't going to hold you back no more, brother. God is all over your life and writing a brand new story in your future. And we just believe with you and we're honored to be a part of your baptism. yourself to us and uh what does this moment mean to you brother it means a lot i'm henry um i've always been a believer but never a true follower and i was introduced to zion five months or so ago and it's been life transforming for me and growing my relationship with god and with all these amazing people around all the time it's it's been a change that i've always wanted and to me this is my next step in, in that faith walk and i can't wait i love it man so today are you declaring publicly that Jesus is the Savior of your sins and the Lord of your life? I am. All right. I love it. It's our privilege to baptize you, Henry. I love it, man. The Father is welcoming. This is our homecoming. have Chriselle and Leanna joining us, making a decision today to go all in for Jesus Christ. And I asked them, is, is today the day where you're going all in, making Jesus your Savior and your Lord? And they both said, yes. yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> like, I got to remember. <laughs> They're like, it's cold. <laughs> it's our privilege to have you both in the community. And, um, you know, this is amazing because 
the relationship that you guys have is unique. And as you step into a relationship with Jesus Christ and your perfect heavenly father, he's going to continue to renew you. He's going to continue to give you his spirit, his love, his grace, his plan, and his purpose for your life. And so as you go under the water, it's a representation that your old way of life, your past, your sins are buried. And when you come back up, you are raised to new life in Jesus Christ to live filled with purpose and the power of his Holy Spirit. It's our privilege to baptize you. Anyone else? <laughs> we love you guys so much. Can we celebrate one more time? Everyone that made a decision to get baptized going all in for Jesus. We love it. You guys be blessed. Have an amazing Sunday. And we will see you soon. There it is. If anyone has seen Judah Molina, please let me know. Let me know. Judah Molina, your mom's looking for you. Actually, she's not looking for you, but <laughs> Judah Molina, if you're out there. Oh, wait, he can't hear me. Never mind. <laughs> I know, but Austin doesn't have my kid anymore. Scarlet saints had a crimson cross. He nailed my dead to that old rugged cross. An empty sleigh at the empty grave. Thank God that stone was rolled away. Day star with coffee.